This is the Bulls Chat Podcast. I am Joe Malone. Joining me, the head coach, the general manager of the North Iowa Bulls. Always a pleasure to talk to him. Todd Sandin, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. So the Bulls were on the road this weekend and uh, quite a bit of being on the road, uh, traveling up to Wilmer and then uh, making a return trip to Minnesota on Saturday night to take on Alexandria. Let's start with uh, the first game of the weekend, a 5-3 win for the Bulls over Wilmer. And I think that's the most points uh, up until uh, uh, this weekend that the Bulls had had scored against them, but come away with the win 5-3. And it started with a nice power play goal in the uh, first period. Uh, talk to me about how that game started. You know, I thought I thought our start was pretty good in that game. Um, we missed some really good chances early. We're fortunate enough to, to get on the board on the power play with uh, Jack Campion, a recent addition, uh, potted a backdoor feed from Carter Eha and put us up one nothing. Now, now following that, um, this would be kind of a theme throughout the weekend where the middle period of the two games the Bulls played were not um, not favoring the Bulls. Uh, Wilmer scores two goals into the second and uh, takes the lead going into the second intermission 2-1. to one. What happened in this game um, where the tide turned Wilmer's way? You know, I, I think that's a that's a it's a scrappy team. They they have uh, a bit more skill than they had last year, and they're going hard. And, and a combination of we had some really good chances in the second period that we just didn't find the back of the net on. Um, I, I think if we're able to get obviously one or two of those, we're we're you know probably ahead or at least tied at the end of two. Um, we, we we did enough to to have a lead after two, but just. Unfortunately, it didn't end up that way, and Wilmer had a, had a good, solid game plan, and they worked very hard at it. Now, when you talk about missed chances, do you um, coach that up at all? Say, like, hey, you're in the right spot. It's just not bouncing our way. Stay there. Do that again. Or do you try and move people around uh, to try and finish those chances better? How does that work? No, I, I think we just keep encouraging our guys. And, and my thought process is if we're getting chances, it's just a matter of time before we find the back of the net. So just keep, and walk, keep working hard to create chances, and, and hopefully we get rewarded for it. Well, those rewards started showing up in the third period as Hayden Fox got a goal uh, just over four minutes into the third. And then about 40 seconds later, Nick Mose Messerly uh, gives the Bulls the lead three to two. And uh, that lead would hold up for, uh, well, um, all the way through the midpoint of the third period before uh, Michael Sweetland ties things up for Wilmer. And the Bulls wasted no time answering back. Braden Utech uh, getting the Bulls back up 4-3 with the goal with about five minutes left to play. Uh, was there something that happened after Wilmer tied the game up where the team kind of um, tightened up their grip on the stick or, or said, okay, we, we need to get back at this thing? I, I think it was more um, after coming out for the third. I, I think our guys played with uh, a bit more determination in the third period. Um, and again, we're going to give Wilmer a ton of credit. Like they, they, they played the game the right way. They played hard. They, they got in position to make some plays and they finished them. So looking at that, like Wilmer's going to be a, a vastly improved team, uh, in depth and in skill set. So there, there's not a team in the West division that that's going to be a, an easy mark this year. And Wilmer proved it right out of the gate. So of what we thought this division was going to be, it's going to be, hard-fought games and competitive games every night. And it was a hard-fought game as we moved to Saturday night as the Bulls were up at Alexandria and the Blizzard end up skating away with the win 4-2. to two. And uh, you talk about the Bulls scoring first. They did so in this game. Uh, about four minutes left in the first period. Cal Noss puts in his second goal of the season. But then right away, coming out of the locker room in the second period, not even waiting a minute into the game, Alexandria ties it up. Two minutes later, they go up two to one. Another two minutes after that, they go up three to one. At that point in time, do you do you try and put a halt to what's happening on the ice? How do you react to bing, bang, boom, all of a sudden you're down three one? Yeah, you know, you've been around us long enough, and we've done that to, to plenty of teams, and it's frustrating. And, and we're pretty positive with our guys throughout the process, and – I just think Saturday night was a, a night, and again, I'm going to give Alexandria a ton of credit. Like they, they played hard, they played physical, they played fast. Like they, they were zipping up and down the rink, and they beat us to pucks, and, and they pressured us and took pucks away. We just weren't very good on Saturday night. Uh, it doesn't happen very often with our group, but um, 
And, and, and I'm going to put myself in there too. Like we, we probably made some lineup adjustments we shouldn't have made from Friday to Saturday, but we have a lot of kids here trying to still figure things out. And you're going to take some lumps early and obviously championships aren't won in, in October. So you, you want to get your kids their reps and, and take a look at guys to see, you know, who's going to be able to do the job down the, down the line and down the stretch. So again, giving Alexandria every bit of credit, like they, they won that game and they played hard and they played fast, but we need to be quite a bit better in the start and just playing a full 60 minute game. Um, I think we kind of, played in spurts in that Alexandria game. Now, I have no degree of coaching background like you do, but I'm staring at the uh, the score sheet here. And if you could just stop every kid on Alexandria whose name starts with C, you'd be better off because they had a Caleb score, <laughs> a Cole score, a Colin score, and a different Cole all score a goal. So you just set, <laughs> shut down anybody with a C on their sweater or C on their first name, and things would be better for the Bulls. <laughs> That's what I love about how in depth you are with your with your reporting and analysis. We will definitely put a mark on those guys next time we play them. <laughs> yep, if it's a Camden or a Caden or a, it doesn't matter, just shutting them down at that point right. in time. Uh, now, next up for the Bulls will be another trip up to uh, Wilmer on Friday night, uh, taking on uh, Wilmer uh, away, and then hosting Wilmer on October thirty first, Halloween, uh, the traditional matchup that the Bulls love to host and then again on friday the 6th wilmer back here at the uh, mason city multi-purpose arena so you're going to be very familiar with uh, wilmer by the time uh, we get into the uh, middle of november yeah it's uh you know the schedule once in a while plays out like that and obviously with us not traveling outside of the division um, we're playing every team 10 times and that's just a stretch of of games where we're going to see a common opponent for the most part of it and is that the sort of thing where you take what you saw that was good from Friday night's game and then just try and replicate that over and over again, say, we're going to just do this until you stop us? Yeah, well, I tell you, Coach Hicks and I have been pouring over the, the game footage from Friday and Saturday night, trying to make some adjustments and work on some things this week in practice to to be more ready for a better weekend for our kids. So, yeah, of course, we're – we're doing what we need to do here to, to get those guys ready. And, and the stuff that they were good at, we're certainly going to emphasize to to keep doing that stuff well. Now, Saturday night is going to be a fun one. It's always fun going out to the rink and watching the Bulls play, but uh, fans are encouraged to dress up in costume. Um, I know the staff is encouraged to dress up in costume. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Um, because my plan was to be Carol Baskin's uh, first husband, because my, <laughs> my wife and kids are going out trick or treating and all that, and I'm not, I'm not going to be with them, and so I figured that's the perfect costume because he's not around. I'm not going to be around. <laughs> um, do you have any plans for uh, for a Halloween costume, or is it strictly business when you get to the rink on Saturday night? You know what? I, I tell you what, I, I will be in my coaching attire, but I am planning to. I think Kathy has some uh, trick or treat opportunities in between periods, and I believe Coach X and I are going to be up moving about the concourse level and dishing out some candy to some youngsters in the crowd. Oh, how awesome is that? I mean, how often do you get a chance to kind of break out of the mindset of coach during that two-and-a-half-hour time period? You, you know what? You don't very often. And with the nature of things in today's world, uh, I, I think it's it's good for us to kind of enjoy what we're so blessed to have here and, and mix and mingle with some of our fan base and definitely make sure the kids are having a good time on Halloween. Yeah. And uh, even though Halloween is associated with uh, the color orange, it would be nice to see red a lot behind the other team's goalie net uh, all throughout <laughs> the evening on Saturday nights. So uh, head coach, general manager, Todd Sandin, thank you so much for your time and uh, for being on the Bulls chat podcast. Thanks, Joe. Greatly appreciate it. It is the Bulls chat podcast. I'm Joe Malone. He is Todd Sandin.